Let's see what we got here. It's a Milwaukee 12 to 1 infrared temperature gun. You know, you're gonna take your temperature from a distance. It is impact rated, fills the same 12 volt battery or the M12 battery that goes in a lot of their other tools. Impact resistance from six feet. So a six foot drop, it's impact resistance. So you're not gonna break it if it falls out of your tool bag while you're carrying it or anything like that. There's some limitations to an infrared gun, which we'll go over as we test it. Let's go ahead and pull that out, see how that works for us. We're gonna take this. Uh, it's pretty cool to begin with. It's smaller than some. It's that same standard battery. If you already have it, totally worth it. It's, see, I'll take this. Impact resistant, up to six feet of drop. It's not gonna break. Infrared thermometer. In our business, it usually has a little bit of a bad reputation. Uh, inspectors love them, all of that, love it. You run into a senior tech, they always say, oh, that's trash, you never wanna use that. I can kind of show you why that is here, and then also, though, explain why it just is what it is. You have to know what the tool is. The main thing that people talk badly about it with is that they, it's not accurate, especially. And the thing is, the 12 to 1, what does the 12 to 1 mean? Well, the 12 to 1 means is that for every 12 feet you get away, that little infrared dot expands one foot for every 12 you back up. When you're really close to something, it's pretty accurate, and it can interact with reflective surfaces. It's only going to be accurate on a totally matte surface. Um, where you're right against it, it's fairly accurate. To kind of try to demonstrate that, I'm gonna shoot the temperature of this light behind me. I put a bead probe on that beforehand. It's about 142, depending 140, 146, generally about 142, depending where on the cover you put it. So we're gonna flip this around, go over that, and show you that. We'll get right up on this first off. So we're right here, we're real close. Um, you know, we're maybe a foot away, and so you're talking about a one inch sample size on it. You'll hit that. And uh, like I say, it's reading pretty close. Any inconsistency there is going to be that the light has a little bit of reflectiveness to it. Um, so that's going to play with it a little bit. But as we back up here, so I'll back up. You know, we're maybe five feet away. You hit it. Your temperature is starting to drop. That temperature is dropping because you're actually reading the whole area around. You're starting to read some of that ceiling on it. You get even further away starts to continue to drop, continue to drop, back up all the way across the room, which sometimes you can imagine doing if you're shooting a grill or a light and it's a real tall vaulted ceiling. You put that light right on it and you're only reading about 109. So obviously it's not, as you get further away it gets inaccurate and you even get that little bit of inaccuracy because the surfaces you're checking usually are not going to be perfectly matte. It's not usually going to be an absorptive surface. You're usually checking something that's painted, you're checking a grill. If you're checking something that's shiny, real inaccurate. So that's kind of the limitations that they give it that reputation where you'll have the old school guys tell you, oh hey, you never want to buy that. Okay, so rubber meets the road on this. The M12 infrared thermometer. Is it worth it? You know, it just depends. You carry all the Milwaukee product, you have the M12 battery, then sure, it's worth it. You swap your battery over, you have it right there, you're recharging it. If you're wanting it to be an actual test piece of equipment, no, no infrared thermometer is gonna do that. What it's good for is what I would call inspection rated. So you're coming through, you're just shooting grills. Hey, I wanna see if these grills are all roughly the same temperature. You know, I wanna see you're walking through a rack room. I wanna just hit each compressor as I walk through roughly the same distance. Yeah, I mean, it's probably good enough for that. It's not a diagnostic tool. Like I say, it's an inspection tool. As we all know, you finish the service call you were just on, you're all finished up, you're walking out of the house. As you're walking out, somebody's standing there, their hand in the air. There's no cold air coming out. This isn't cold at all. So now you have to get your ladder off your truck, carry it in, set it up, put your probe there. Having an infrared thermometer is totally worth it in that case. It's in your tool bag, you put it out. Nope, see you actually have 60 degree air here. You shoot down the return grill. What do you have here? You have that. Um, like I say, you just want to be careful with it because you know, like with that light, as you're backing away, you aren't reading it as honestly. And so the same thing's happening with the grill. You're reading cold. If you have a real hot attic that's not well insulated, that ceiling can be 120 degrees. And so it can give you this false read if you were using it diagnostically to say, it's not working efficiently. You know, I've seen some guys use it to take a split. Don't use it to take a split. It's not, it doesn't replace the proper tool to do that. But it's totally worth having, it's going to save you a lot of time when you're just real quick trying to demonstrate, hey look, this is cooling, that's cooling, which grills go, you know, you're trying to test a house with a couple of zones, which grills go to which when one's running, one's not. Totally useful to have for that, so you aren't going to move a ladder to take. 
So yeah, I like it.